Are you wondering how to write the best lab report and get an A in those super hard labs that take way more time than the one credit hour that you are provided on your transcript? Well, good thing you found this video because in this show, I'm gonna be giving tips so you can crush your lab reports and make sure they don't destroy your GPA. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching the 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit, guys, which is a bunch of eBooks so that you can win and access to the Facebook group, follow the link in the description. And if you have a question about what's going on in your engineering world right now, comment below and I'll make a video just for you. I got this question from 1% Engineer Adriel, who is in the community and I've gotten to know him pretty well, but he's concerned about getting the best grades for his lab reports this semester and a whole bunch of people in the Facebook group chimed in on this question mentors and graduate students and people who have been through the process over and over again and overwhelmingly this was the core response to how you can get the best grade on your lab reports so your labs don't destroy your grades don't take up way too much time because in my experience if you have a one credit lab for physics calc whatever usually it still takes like five six hours a week and sometimes you may be wasting your time, sometimes you're still going to get bad grades, even though you poured all this time and effort into those labs. What the whole community said, and what I totally agree with, is that you have to talk to your TA. Most engineering labs are taught by a PhD doctoral candidate or doctoral student, and each TA is different in their requirements, what they want. Maybe someone wants thorough writing. Maybe someone wants excessive validation of your findings. Maybe someone wants awesome diagrams, awesome figures. You don't know until you actually converse with your TA and get to the bottom of what they actually want. And if you do this, it has further benefits as well. It shows your TA that you want to succeed, that you are ambitious, that you're not afraid of them. It also builds a good relationship with them so that you can maybe go to this person for advice. Maybe you can help them on your research. Maybe you can use them as a recommendation or a reference. Maybe they can connect you to other people in that sphere if you are interested in the type of engineering that they are studying for, for their graduate degree. So as always guys, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you ask for nothing, you will receive nothing. And if you ask for the world, you will typically be rewarded with that because people want to help out those who are trying, who are putting in the work, who want to succeed. And it will become clear to your TA if you're going to that person and you're asking, hey, listen, I want to get an A in this class. Please let me know what you want. Let me know how I can best perform in your lab so that this isn't bad for me and I have a good experience and get good grades and succeed and rise to the top 1% of my career. So that's the core answer, Adriel and 1% Nation. I hope this helped you. If it did, consider subscribing because I release videos two times a week for engineering success. And if you have a question about what's going on in your engineering world right now, comment below and I can make a video just for you. Check out another video, guys. I have over 65 lessons for young engineers so that you can succeed. And as always, thanks for watching 1% Nation and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% engineer. Cheers.